Good evening, I'm Darren Mara, the top stories. The world reacts. Donald Trump launches the first direct military assault on Syria. Tonight I ordered a targeted military strike. Syria calls it a blatant act of aggression and Russia demands answers. Australia backs the missile strikes as calibrated and proportionate. The world will not tolerate the use of these chemical weapons. The U.S. has carried out its first direct military action against forces commanded by Syria's President Bashar al-Assad. Two U.S. destroyers fired 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles at an airbase in response to the chemical attack that killed 80 civilians. The Pentagon says Russia was notified ahead of the attack. President Vladimir Putin says the strike was illegal and would further damage U.S.-Russian relations. This is what retaliation looks like. 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles launched from the USS Ross and the USS Porter, bound for a Syrian government airbase. Assad choked out the lives of helpless men, women and children. Tonight I ordered a targeted military strike on the airfield in Syria from where the chemical attack was launched. Tonight I call on all civilized nations to join us in seeking to end the slaughter and bloodshed in Syria. Syrian state television calling this an act of aggression. The U.S. has been tracking Syrian flight paths. This is where the Pentagon believes Tuesday's attack on Khan Sheikhoun was launched from. Today, from two aircraft carriers in the eastern Mediterranean, precision cruise missiles fired at the Al Shayrat Air Base in Homs. At 3.45 a.m. local time, they struck their targets. Syrian aircraft, fuel stations, ammunition supply bunkers. There have reportedly been deaths. Observers say depots are on fire, the base almost completely destroyed. But U.S. officials admit it has not stopped Assad's ability to carry out future attacks. That's because the Syrian military evacuated most of its planes before the airstrikes. The Al Shayrat Air Base has been central to this war, dogged by claims of chemical weapons use. Pentagon officials say they were careful to avoid hitting parts of the base where there could be chemical weapons or Russian troops. Their presence raising questions about Russian complicity in chemical attacks. U.S. defense officials say they informed the Russians of their plans shortly before the missile strike. But the Secretary of State says there was no direct contact between Washington and Moscow, that they didn't seek permission, earlier repeating the White House line. It's a serious matter. It requires a serious response. The Kremlin says the U.S. has broken international law and done significant damage to U.S.-Russia ties, condemning the strikes as aggression against a sovereign nation. Syria's foreign minister earlier reiterating government denials that it was behind the chemical attack. The Syrian Arab army has never used chemical weapons and will not use chemical weapons against Syrians and even against terrorists who are killing our people. But President Trump does not believe anything the Syrian leader says. I think what happened in Syria is a disgrace to humanity. And he's there, and I guess he's running things. So something should happen. It now has. In the United States, Brett Mason, SBS World News.
While Russia and Iran have strongly condemned the U.S. airstrikes, America's allies are supporting it. Several countries said they were notified in advance, but none had been asked to take part. Turkey, a NATO member, has welcomed the U.S. military action in Syria and is calling for President Assad's immediate removal. China, however, says it's worried about the latest developments and is urging a political settlement. Suriye'nin 感到担忧。我们始终主张叙利亚问题应该通过政治手段加以解决。the Australian government was given a few hours' notice ahead of the strikes. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull supported the U.S. move. As it has for decades, Australia is standing by its closest military ally. The Australian government strongly supports the swift and just response of the United States. Malcolm Turnbull's described a U.S. decision to launch missile strikes in Syria as calibrated and proportionate. He's condemned the recent chemical attack on innocent civilians as a crime against humanity and says the perpetrators must be held to account. This is a vitally important signal, a vitally important message that we will not tolerate, the world will not tolerate the use of these chemical weapons. You can't gas the citizens of your own country. That is a war crime, pure and simple. The Defence Minister's US counterpart called to tell her about the plan this morning, just hours before the US pounced. Australian Defence Force personnel have been involved in joint coalition airstrikes over Syria for more than a year, but only in the fight against IS. They didn't play a role in this latest mission, although the government has already been in close talks with US officials about the next step. We are not at war with the Assad regime and the United States have made it clear that they are not seeking to overthrow the Assad regime. Australia has also taken appropriate measures in light of this operation to review our force protection arrangements uh, in the Middle East. Both sides of the political divide here in Australia are united in their support for the United States' latest move. But they're calling on other nations like Russia that have backed Bashar al-Assad's regime to pull back. And if they think that he's become totally unacceptable now to the international community, which he has, then I wouldn't be surprised if they cut him loose within days. It would be a major development in a brutal civil war that's now in its seventh year. Maria Yovanovitch, SBS World News. Markets around the region have taken today's US airstrike on Syria in their stride, despite an initial shock. The Australian share market started strongly but lost those gains after news of the attack on Syria broke. Mainly because of uncertainty, uncertainty what will happen going forward. That's why you see this typical knee-jerk reaction. The Australian dollar hit a four-week low as investors fled to so-called safe haven assets like the US currency and gold, while oil surged to a four-week high. Syria doesn't export a lot of oil. It's not not a big producer of oil, um, but obviously anything going on in that part of the world does cause uncertainty. The Middle East supplies nearly half of the world's crude. Analysts like Shane Oliver say that market nerves should be temporary, provided there isn't a rapid escalation of US involvement because conflict isn't new. Whether it's news of a terrorist attack or news of a um, military action somewhere, but then a few days later or a little while later, the market's rebounded and moves on to the next thing. Like whether President Donald Trump can get his tax cuts and infrastructure spending plans through Congress. Global investors will now turn their focus to tonight's update on the state of the US jobs market and the outcome come of discussions between the leaders of the US and China. Hoping to see something of a deal in terms of trade so that they don't get a trade war going. Locally, the spillover effects of a hot housing market is a concern. We've revised up our house price expectations for this year to about 7.5% and, and, and think roughly around 10% for Sydney, Melbourne. Ricardo Gonsalves, SBS World News. 
Let's check the finance figures now. And by the close, our share market added six points despite being in the red for most of the day. The miners fell, the banks were mixed, while gold producers like Newcrest did well. A profit warning hit the reject shop, but jobs portal site Seek rose to a seven week high. Markets in Europe are down in early deals. The Australian dollar is lower against the world's major currencies, buying 75.2 US cents. Counter-terror police have launched an investigation after a service station worker was stabbed to death and three other men were attacked in Queanbeyan near Canberra. Two boys aged 15 and 16 have been arrested following a 14-hour violent rampage. This service station, the centre of a bloody crime scene. Zishan Akbar, the innocent victim of a horrific crime spree. The Pakistani national was finishing his shift just before midnight when two teenage boys allegedly attacked him, stabbing him multiple times before leaving him for dead. Police say the teens then smashed their way out of the store, fleeing with cash and several other stolen items. Zishan's colleague arrived 10 minutes later and discovered his body. He arrived here just before midnight. He was about to take over his shift and... Uh and came across uh, the gruesome site. Police allege it was one of many attacks the teens were involved in. An aggravated break and enter where a man was bashed with a tyre iron. Another one where a man was bashed in a park here with a beer bottle. Uh, and another possible attempt robbery um, that occurred just over the border in the ACT. After a short pursuit this morning, two teenagers aged 15 and 16 were arrested. The counter-terrorism unit are investigating whether the crime may have been motivated by extreme religious beliefs. Detectives examining a message written in blood on the store's window. There was physical evidence at the scene which does go to our uh, view that this might be uh, an act of terrorism. The involvement in this crime of two males, two youths, teenagers, is a shocking matter. Friends and locals struggling to comprehend the senseless violence. That is my friend. He was working with me also. So he's from my same city, same country. So it was really sad. You know, it's coming a tight community. And to see that someone felt the need to do that to someone else is disgusting. 29-year-old Zishan is one of four sons to parents in Karachi and had recently gone home to visit them. He was a very sweet young boy very hardworking, very dedicated. Uh, in his eight years of stay here, he had earned a lot of friends and a lot of love. The teenagers are in custody in the ACT and are awaiting extradition to New South Wales, where they face a string of charges. Lydia Feng, SBS World News. Well, coming up after the break, overshadowed by a missile attack, a progress report on the China-US summit. So I got a call one day asking me to do this story on medical marijuana and I never expected it to change my life as profoundly as it did. At first the thought of it I was, is my daughter going to get high? This is basically a harmless substance. It's an illegal product obtained illegally and people don't have the experience with it. To relieve misery and suffering, what's wrong with us? Why can't we do this? The truth about medical marijuana, tomorrow 8.35 on SBS and On Demand. The seven-seat Hyundai Santa Fe. Powerful, beautiful, and surprising. Now from just 37,990 drive away. Enough said. Trivago makes it easy for you to find the ideal hotel for the best price. Just go to Trivago, type in where you want to go, and with two clicks, select your check-in and check-out dates and search. You can then easily compare all the hotel rooms that meet your search criteria and find the room that is ideal for you. Remember, Trivago shows you all the different prices for the exact same room. And that's how you can be sure that you find your ideal hotel for the best price. Hotel Trivago. Jump into Woolworths this Easter. You'll find our 250 gram Cadbury Dairy Milk Easter Bunny for just $4. Save $3.50. That's why I picked Woolies for Easter. <laughs> the overall Ancestry DNA experience is actually a really exciting story to tell. I've won so many new friends and I've got even more laughs. Discover the story only your DNA can tell. Order your Ancestry DNA kit today.
G'day guys, Matt Wright here from Outback Wrangler. Great Northern Brewing Co. is giving you and two mates a chance to join me on a four-day True North experience. Look out for specially marked packs and go to greatnorthern.com.au forward slash win to enter. Power with class-leading diesel fuel economy. Best holiday ever, Dad. Nissan Navara. Stronger for longer. Right now at Bridgestone Select, when you buy three selected Bridgestone fuel saving, touring or performance tyres, you'll get the fourth one free. For tyres and auto service you can count on, you're always in safe hands at your local Bridgestone Select. Bridgestone Select. Next week on The Chef's Line. It's African Week. Join us as four new home cooks face off against four new pro chefs from Adelaide restaurant Africola. Let's cook. I'm not confident I can beat four home cooks. This is chicken peri peri my way. I don't think I've ever seen anyone put a chicken in the microwave before. <laughs> <laughs> the Chef's Line. Weeknights at 6 on SBS. The U.S. attacks on Syria took place just before President Trump met Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping for the first time. Trade and the growing threat from North Korea are expected to top the agenda at the two-day summit. Donald Trump arriving for the most important meeting of his presidency so far. And not long before him, the leader of the world's other economic powerhouse, Xi Jinping. Two leaders with contrasting styles and agendas finally meeting face to face at Mr. Trump's Florida resort. One says America first, the other pushes multilateral trade. One more choreographed, the other more off the cuff. We've had a long discussion already, and so far I have gotten nothing, absolutely nothing. <laughs> but we have developed a friendship, I can see that, and I think long term. We're going to have a very, very great relationship, and I look very much forward to it. Smiles now. But railing against China was one of the hallmarks of Mr. Trump's run for the White House. We can't continue to allow China to rape our country. Mr. Trump upset far more goods are coming in from China than going out. But there are doubts about his threats to introduce tariffs, which could spark a trade war. I don't think uh, we're going to get into a trading war with China. It's Again, it would, it would not be good for the United States and it wouldn't be good for China either. American companies manufacturing products in China, like smartphones, clothes and shoes, keeps prices low for American consumers. Mr Trump now under pressure to keep his promise to bring some of those jobs back to America. Trade has been perhaps the single most important issue, along with immigration, for him as a candidate. So he'll need to show something, again, from his standpoint, that represents progress. President Trump also hoping to force China to do more to stop North Korea's nuclear ambition. Today's strikes on Syria, perhaps a warning to Pyongyang, though the administration is being urged not to go it alone there. We're going to do a lot better at it if we were doing this in conjunction with China and with the Republic of Korea than if we're trying to do it separately. A tall order from a reluctant Chinese president. China believes it's better off with even a nuclear-armed and hostile North Korea on its border than with a reunified Korean peninsula allied to the United States. Boycott, Outside the Chinese president's hotel in Florida, supporters and opponents, some wary of China's growing power, and in particular its expansionism in the South China Sea, concerns shared by the Trump administration. Christine Carney, SBS World News. Romanian woman Andrea Cristia has died in hospital more than two weeks after the Westminster terror attack. Ms. Christia had been in hospital since falling into the Thames as the attacker drove into crowds on Westminster Bridge. She was holidaying with her boyfriend. She's the fifth victim of the March 22 attack. A young girl in India is recovering after she was rescued from a forest. Authorities claim she was found living alongside monkeys. <laughs> It's a tale that has echoes of Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book. The young girl now being treated in hospital after she was reportedly found living alongside monkeys in Uttar Pradesh in northern India. 
It's claimed local woodcutters discovered her living in a wildlife sanctuary in January. They say she was unable to communicate and was walking on all fours. She apparently screeched like the monkeys when approached, but appears to understand the local dialect. The girl, whose exact age is not known, is not yet able to speak, but can now eat with her hands and is walking. Police are reviewing missing children reports and are hoping to identify the parents. Sasha Payne, SBS World News. Comedy fans are mourning the death of legendary funny man Don Rickles. The comedian and actor made a career of turning insults into one-liners. Back in the days, before internet snark, he was the king of insult comedy. Mr. Warmth, Don Rickles. His big breakthrough was on Johnny Carson. Now other performers are showering Rickles with praise, tweeted Jason Alexander. He created insult comedy, and yet every one of his targets felt loved and honored. And Orson Welles, 30 years ago you were handsome, and now we're going to put Goodyear on your face and fly over the beach for a half hour. Watch him crack up Larry King. <laughs> what a cheap show. They can't even get the host to show up. <laughs> ah, shut up, Larry. Get on with it. Rickles played some serious roles alongside Robert De Niro in Scorsese's Casino and some not-so-serious roles, Mr. Potato Head in Toy Story. What are you looking at, you hockey puck? The Donald once tried to get Don to buy a Trump condo. And this is nine billion six, and this is eight billion nine. And I, and I looked at him and I threw a dollar on the floor and says, leave me alone. <laughs> Well, city in China was brought to a standstill by a vicious hailstorm. Huge hailstones pelted Guiyang in the southwest. And to the forecast now, in the major centres, sunny in Perth and thunderstorms in Darwin, partly cloudy skies in Adelaide, Melbourne, Hobart, Canberra and Sydney. Light rain in Brisbane. To sport now, when Melbourne City has scored an important victory against Adelaide. The new video assistant referee system in use for the first time in a match in Australia wasn't needed. On the pitch, it was a first half header by Tim Cahill that ensured all three points. City is now five points clear of fifth placed Western Sydney. In the NRL, South Sydney has won a tight tussle with the Penrith Panthers. Locked 14 all at half time, Adam Reynolds was the hero for South Sydney, scoring their try in the second half before kicking a decisive field goal in the final minute. In the early game, the Bulldogs ran out 10-point winners after coming from behind to beat the Knights. That's SBS World News. Good night.